Hi, I'm Eileen Martin. I'm part of the DAS Day project. And this video is just to show you some of the basics of getting started with DAS Day, especially if you're interested in being a developer. Um, and maybe if you haven't used Git before or some of those tools, I hope that this will be helpful for you. All right, so first let's look at some resources that are already out there uh, to help you get started. So let's say if you're totally new to using Git, one of the resources that I think is great is called Oh My Git, it's a game. There we go. And it's just ohmygit.org. Um, but you can use this to basically learn how to how to work with Git. What does it mean to have branches? How do you merge together uh, different branches of a repository? All of that kind of stuff. Get those basic skills there in a kind of fun and really accessible way. All right. Another great resource that was put together by Derek Chambers is Open Source Course. Um, so there's a fair amount of material here. It's still in development. Um, but there is already quite a bit of uh, interesting material here. Things like using Git, style for Python, um, being able to do like linting, which is part of how we how we manage our project, um, using different data models, decorators, types, uh, a little bit about testing. And um, so I would encourage you to take a look at that as another resource for learning about how to contribute to open source projects generally, especially for um, things like scientific computing. It's really important that we get these things like testing really integrated as part of our development workflow because there isn't a separate testing team. All of us have to work together to contribute to the testing. All right, and then the other resource to take a look at is just the DASCore documentation. So if you go to DASCore.org, that's going to be a ton of resources for you. We're still sort of improving it, building this, uh, but a lot of the basics are here. Some of the important things you can see here are some highlights on just basically how do you use DASCore. Um, if you're interested in uh, getting started as a user, the tutorial is kind of where you start at. Um, if you're interested in contributing to DASCore, um, and you've already gotten used to using DASCore, then head on over to contributing pages. There's a lot of information here. Um, things like a code of conduct, so we make sure that our developer community is really welcoming to everybody. Um, being able to sort of set this up, uh, it points you over to things like our GitHub discussions and planning documents. We've got our sort of scrum board here. So you can see all of that kind of stuff here. It's all documented. Um, there's also rules about, you know, what goes into DAS core versus other packages, that kind of stuff. There's leadership contact information for who are currently in leadership roles. And um, so hopefully that's helpful. All right, so following the instructions that are on the DAS core page, we're going to install DAS core in development mode. All right, from this DAS core development installation page, you can see that first we need to clone DAS core. Then we've got to pull all the latest Git tags. We've got to do this every once in a while. We could create a virtual environment. That's optional, but I'm going to do it. And then we're going to do our install in development mode. We also want to use pre-commit hooks. This way, our code is actually going to be able to stay kind of following the same style and all um, coordinated. This is helpful when it's not just you that's developing the code, but when you've got a whole team like we do for DAS Day. All right, I'm just going to follow these instructions from the DAS core development installation page. So I've got my clone first. All right, so I've cloned it. Now I'm going to move into that folder. So first I can check where I am right now. If I list what's there, you see that I've got a DAS core folder. All right, now I want to pull tags. All right, and notice that I'm doing this through the master branch. That's the one that like generally people are going to use as users. Uh, okay, we're up to date there. Now I'm going to create my environment.
All right, now what you're going to see in a minute is that it's going to stop saying solving environment and it's actually going to wrap that up. Then it's going to move on to be able to deal with all the different packages that are part of this content environment. And um, we'll just play that on fast forward. It's finished up with setting up the environment now, but you can see that I uh, actually had somebody walk in. So I was recording this during the DAS Day office hours. Uh, they're every Wednesday, 11 to 12, at least um, this semester for both me and Derek Chambers. Um, feel free to drop by either of our offices in Green Center if you want to talk about anything related to the development. All right, now that we've got our environment set up, let's go ahead and activate that environment. So we're going to say Conda activate DAS core. All right, so now we can see that uh, instead of being in the base setup for the environment, we're in the DAS core setup. So you see that down in parentheses. So that's how you know if you've changed, at least on a Mac computer. And now you want to actually set up your installation in development mode. Okay. So first, let's take a look at instructions here. All right, so we're going to do pip install, and then we'll use the dash e flag, and then look at test and docs. OK, but there's one trick to this. So if you do it just following these instructions, you might get an error from ZSH, like what's described here that says there's no matches found for the test and docs, like what you're looking for. Um, so there's one small trick that you can do. And just following this page, you just add these backslashes into those square brackets right before them. And so that way it's going to actually work pretty easily. So it's a small modification that you're going to do. All right, let's look over at my command line and I'll show you how it's going to look if I don't do this modification and then how it's going to look if I do this modification and it works. So first, what if I don't do the modification? I just say pip install dash e dot square bracket test dots. Okay, so we see that ZSH, we get this complaint, no matches found for dot test or docs. And instead, we're gonna have these slashes here. Okay, so now we've successfully installed DAS core in development mode. The last step is to set up those pre-commit hooks, uh, which is gonna be able to get us into our whole setup of being able to do things where it's going to like check the quality of the code style, that kind of stuff. So, all right, we're going to say pre dash commit install dash. F. Okay, now we're good to go. 